So this is the newest episode featuring Madam Rose. In this episode, she actually takes the time to answer a couple of questions that were asked in the in the comment section because she does read the comments. She follows my YouTube, so she is seeing these comments. So she answered a couple of questions and she talked about one of her cop clients. So stay tuned. Let's get into this. This was one of the comments she responded to um, because Madam Rose said that she took DOM training from a psychotherapist. The person said, can we acknowledge that line? This is Madam Rose. She said, yes, you are literally in someone's head, not their heart. Please note, BSDM has been removed from the DSMV-5. It's no longer a mental deficiency. It has been studied that those involved have a healthier way of communicating their needs and have a healthy outlet to manage stress. You learn, a, you learn the art of female-led relationships. You learn protocols to ensure safety. You learn ethics and you assess personality you're dealing with. There is a psychology behind why people do what they do. I wanted to understand their mindset. Attraction is not based on the physical in this realm. It is the mental manipulation between consenting adults. Physical attraction is glib. The second comment that she acknowledged was, they have to pay for this, not ask it of their partners. Ugh, they really are the weaker sex. There is a psychology behind his rationale. He's married the woman of his dreams. He has her on a pedestal. He cannot ask the mother of his children to degrade him. Ego will not allow for it. They have an image to uphold, thus holding the partner hostage to unrealistic expectations of being too good. He doesn't owe that to the dom. He isn't her protector. He doesn't provide for her. He's free. He's free to be who he wants to with the dom. So there she is. She cleared up a few of those comments. And in the previous video that I did about her, yes, I am going to have to organize this into a playlist. but. She cleared up the fact that she is not having any kind of relations with these people. So just know that and understand that. She said that she's going to add, um, answer the question about what these men think of their responsibilities and how uh, um, and how I handle them with a few PG-13 um, examples. Before any thought is given to allowing a man to serve me, I do a few things to test his mindset and state. There is a 50 question test. Then there's the learning about his relationships with other women in his life and how he conducts himself. 50 questions, 50 questions. That is deep, y'all. She said, I find, I find out his kinks and determine if they align with mine and want to be bothered by his neediness. If and when they do, I demand my monetary tribute. She, she is putting a premium on her time and energy. Take note of that, y'all. She says, most of the time, the men complain about having a life easy like women. They want to stay home, cook and clean. They want to be degraded and humiliated because they know they are lying about their patriarchal role when we talk about cosplaying manhood. Mentally, it's the stark contrast of their day-to-day -day life and the time they get to let their hair down. My cop, I keep in stockings, a short skirt, and his hands are bound behind at his waist, just enough for him to complete his task. For instance, if I am eating, I eat my meal first. He serves me. I request water as soon as he is about to sit down. I make it a point to be a royal jerk. If my food is too hot, he must blow it. I inconvenience him in any way I can and make him thank me for it. Now, when he complains about his wife, I ask how, how he could have served his wife better. Depending on the micro response, um, shifty eyes, holding his breath, or any noticeable irritation, I give him three to five lashes with my cow whip. I make him explain how he could have performed better as a man, but I remind him that he is my little bee. I control his speech also. He will call throughout the week. I ask in general to make sure his mind is right. I make him cry and whine a lot I make him cry and whine a lot, the pressures of being a big, strong cop and man, and I remind him he's a Mitch in a dress. There's all kind of mean things I do. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to meet a wife, though. I met his. Total accident, too. But I met her. 
I trained her on how to properly treat him like the piece of crap he really is. Now he's good. Now he's a good domesticated dog for her. <laughs> she calls and asks for permission to eat and if he can use the bathroom. And I want to add, my family knows a few of my vanilla clients. They all ask me what took so long for me to come out. <laughs> so that is a couple of things. As you can see, this is an interactive um, woman. This will be an interactive series. Go ahead, drop your comments. She sees them. She, she and I are talking. So let me know. And obviously, this is going to be a good one. I will go ahead and work on getting these organized so that you guys can find them easily. But they will always have the same thumbnail to begin so that you know what's coming is going to be good. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share.